everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Lucas and today I'm actually going to be talking to you guys about how to break a water fast. Just to kind of recap on my video sharing with you guys my 20 day water fast journey. Um, I really wanted to make a part two just to kind of show you guys how to properly break a water fast. Really quickly, I just want to put a disclaimer just like as I should. Uh, I'm not a doctor, uh, I'm not a dietitian, I'm just someone who went through the whole water fast experience myself and I really want to share my experience with you all in case you're on the journey of, you know, healthier eating choices or just taking control of your life. I know I've been there before, so I just want to put that disclaimer out there that like anything, please consult your doctor. But yes, this video is going to be following up with the first part, so if you haven't watched my 20 day uh, water fast journey video, feel free to click on the links in the description below or you can you know, well actually you can't click on the video anymore, YouTube doesn't allow that. But yes, definitely check the first part of that video and I'll put it in the description below or the comment section for you guys to check out. Breaking a water fast is equally as important as starting a water fast. Um, it's very, very important that you introduce your body in a very gradual manner and, you know, depending on how long you do a water fast, that kind of greatly determines like how long you should recover for since I did a long-term fast. Um, this is mostly going to be covering a long-term recovery. Um, but in a sense, if you have done a short water fast, you can simply do the same thing, just kind of condense it according to like what worked for you. If you did five days, maybe take three days to recover or four days or even five days if you're just really sensitive. So it really is a matter of just monitoring yourself and of course, talking with your doctor. I have to say this guys, I'm sorry. It's probably annoying. I did 20 days, so I did about 14 days of recovery time. Now normally they say you can do 15, sometimes even 20 if it really is hard on your stomach and you're trying to eat and you just your body's not used to it. So I did about 14 days of recovery just to be on the safe side. Um, that's about two weeks. So yeah, let's jump into this video. Also, if you guys like this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you could rate, comment, and subscribe. I do my best to make videos every week. Um, I make vlogs, I make interesting videos, so it would really mean a lot to me if you guys could show your support. All right, so let's just jump into it. So day one to three, I had mostly liquids. Um, I had bone broth, chicken bone broth. You can also do beef bone broth or even chicken stock. It doesn't really matter. Um, uh, they really encourage uh, you to drink bone broths because it has a lot of minerals and nutrients in it. It also has collagen in it, which will kind of like support your body during the part of it, you know, waking up to eating. Uh, water is always essential. And then every morning I would also do an, a shot of apple cider vinegar, which honestly was not the most refreshing thing in the morning. It is really harsh. Um, it didn't really cause my stomach to get upset, although I could feel like a little bit of bubbling in my stomach. Not like a weird bubbling, just like a Ooh, what's this kind of bubbling? Um, and the apple cider vinegar is really good because it kind of wakes your digestive system up and it kind of introduces all the good bacteria back into your gut so that it's when it comes time to digesting, it'll have all those good bacteria to break all that stuff down. So apple cider vinegar or even a little bit of yogurt is good. Then from there on day four to six, I still had broth, bone broth, and I kind of kept doing the bone broth until like maybe day... Um, Day seven is when I actually started making meals with the bone broth. So I introduced the bone broth until up until the point where I was comfortable eating and then I would kind of go from there. So on day four to six, I also had um, two boiled eggs daily, AM and PM, and then I would kind of like munch on the egg throughout the day depending on like, some days I was able to eat the whole egg and then some days I could just only munch throughout the whole day. So again, just monitor and see what your body is capable of handling. Also, um, I would try to eat a small amount of yogurt. Um, the first time I tried yogurt, I found it way too sweet. I was not used to it. But then again, I don't think I really like the yogurt that we got in the first place. So I think we ended up getting a different kind of yogurt and it was a lot better. Um, so I just basically had like a tablespoon of yogurt every day just to kind of still continue introducing my body with those natural and healthy bacteria. And then also water. Again, don't ever forget the water and I will definitely let you guys know why at the end of this video because it is very, very important. All right, so by day seven and 10, I was ready to start eating solid foods. Um, I felt like at this point, my body was able to handle it. I didn't have like any weird stomach issues or anything and so after gradually introducing my body to eating boiled eggs um, on a daily process, I felt like my body was able to handle like more solid items. So I started actually doing three meals a day, very, very small meals. Um, you know, like 
I started continuing with the boiled eggs. I introduced steamed vegetables. My favorite steamed vegetable was basically um, green beans and broccoli, also steamed carrots. Um, and also I started at this point making chicken soup because I love chicken soup so I basically would stick with my same recipe but I would just omit the noodle parts because I am doing keto so I still want to continue following a keto diet just getting rid of all the extra carbs. And then also I would start drinking lemon juice throughout the day and also vitamins. Now that I was at the point where I was starting to eat more, I was able to take vitamins, which I was actually super happy with because I did feel like I was going through some kind of deficiency. Like on a normal basis, I take vitamin D, which is really great if like, you know, you're not going outside as much. Um, and since I work from home, it can be very hard sometimes to just go outside. Um, so taking vitamin D is so very important. I was like really looking forward to actually taking it. So I started taking vitamins by that time and also like always just drinking water. Now at this point, I did have to kind of like monitor myself a little bit closely because even though I was trying to like slowly introduce food back into my diet, um, there were moments where my stomach would get upset. So I would have to like kind of take a step back and then just kind of start eating something a little bit softer. And I really encourage you guys to just take it slow if you find that your stomach is starting to get upset or you're just starting to get a little bit bloated, maybe try to eat a little bit less or less of whatever it is that you previously ate. I would highly recommend not eating sweets, um, very sugary stuff or like really spicy stuff. Processed stuff, for example, too, is also not recommended to be eaten. Um, fast food, stay away from all of this junk. So after day seven to 10, I kind of like monitored myself and continued eating. And uh, I think like after like a second day of like me eating regularly, that's when I start to have regular bowel movements. And I'm sorry if that's TMI, but I do think it needs to be talked about. Um, I think it's a good indication that you're doing good if you start having regular bowel movements, um, which basically tells us that our digestive system is doing its thing. It's breaking out all those foods and it's letting it out. So if you find that that happens, that's a good sign that you're doing great. Keep doing what you're doing because you want that to happen. Um, and since in the very beginning, your digestive system is not awake, the fact that it is slowly but surely starting to get awake to the point where it's starting to flush everything out, that's a good sign. All right, so I'm not really sure where we left off because my camera died on me, so I had to change the battery. So on day 12 to 15, this is where I actually started eating a little bit normally. I did start to do keto planning, which for those who don't know what keto is, it's basically when you eat very, very low carbs, um, high protein. So I personally do better on a keto diet, and before I kind of fell back into like eating really bad and gaining all that weight, um, I was actually doing keto and I absolutely loved it. I am definitely gonna be doing keto for the rest of my life, just because like I feel so good on it. Um, so I did keto meal planning for like the full month and like I kind of alternate, you know, recipes here and there. I even have like a little recipe book full of all recipes that I really want to make, which really makes doing a ketogenic diet so easy and fun. Um, another few things that I want to talk about, which I'm not really sure if some people cover it, but it's bowel movements. Now I know this may be a little bit nasty to talk about, but we're all humans here and we're all adults, so I feel like I, it's good to talk about it. I knew that I was ready to start eating a little bit more and I started having regular bowel movements. Now for me personally, I actually started having bowel, regular bowel movements by day five and day six, and that was when I started to have more of the boiled eggs, um, and I was starting to eat a little bit more regularly, and then they became even more regular by day seven and 10, um, day more. Well, through those time periods. So when you start to have regular bowel movements, it's a really good indication to you that you're doing a great job. Just keep eating well, keep slowly, you know, keep monitoring your body to see if anything changes. Um, and it just, it's a good indication that everything in your body is working great um, as it should be. So monitor your bowel movements. You may not go in the very beginning, um, so don't stress out. I know a lot of people are like really concerned, like when am I gonna have my first bowel movement? Is it gonna hurt? It could be TMI, but like um, if you're drinking a lot of water, it shouldn't be, it should be comfortable. Leads me into my next um, advice. Don't skip out on drinking water. At this point, um, you may think that you're getting water from eating, and I know for me, it was really easy for me to forget about drinking water. My ankle starts swelling up, and um, it was it wasn't painful for anything. I just noticed like, oh my goodness, my ankle is swollen because I was um, I was moving my ankles and I noticed that it was a kind of hard to move and it just felt like tight, 
like the skin just felt really tight so when I looked at my ankle I saw that it was swollen so I realized I was I was going through like water retention which is basically our body's way of like holding on to water if we're kind of dehydrated and it occurs to me oh my goodness like my body has been used to having so much water for like 20 days and then all of a sudden I'm just back to eating it could be kind of a shock to my body so they actually say when that happens um, just slowly start to move a little bit more often but also increase your water intake and sure enough, as soon as I did that, the swelling went away. Which also then leads me to my last point, which is stretch often. I didn't mention this in my first video when I was talking about my 20 day water fast, but I really wish that I had done a little bit more stretches throughout the process of me doing my water fast, because I think it would have been a little bit easier on my muscles in the end. I noticed that when I started to eat a little bit more and I started to lo uh, move a little bit more, um, it was really hard on my muscles. and I. And I, when I say hard, I basically mean like my muscles would get like a tingling sensation and um, sometimes they would go numb. If even like, I don't know if you can tell, but in the first video I was constantly like moving around like this. That was because like my muscle, like just sitting crisscross applesauce like was kind of weird for my legs. They weren't used to it and they kind of would go numb. So I kind of wish throughout the whole process of me doing my water fast, I did some kind of stretches so that my muscles would be used to movement even after like I start to go through the recovery phase and I started moving more often. Um, I don't go through that anymore because now I go outside regularly, I, I walk often, I do yoga in the morning, I do stretches in the morning, daily, regularly. So I don't experience that now, but I do wish that I had done it before. So if you're thinking about doing a water fast or if you are ending a water fast, I highly recommend you all do some yoga stretches or just stretches in general. I hope this video has helped you guys out um, when it comes to breaking a water fast. It's really important on how you do it. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. And I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. I don't think I am. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a successful water fast. I hope your recovery is successful as well. I want to thank you guys for all your love and support. If you haven't already, please rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.